Oh, that's my brother, Ryle. The first official customer. Well, you'd have to buy something to be considered a customer. Right now, you're just loitering. This wouldn't typically be a movie I'd discuss on my channel. But since I'm currently researching the romance genre for a new novel I'm writing, I might as well analyze this movie on the channel. Romance is a storytelling genre as old as storytelling itself. It's definitely evolved from the days of Romeo and Juliet and even beyond the Victorian era. But there's been a shift in recent years with significant tonal shifts to the dramatic side of the coin. Stories like The Fault in Our Stars focused on finding love even in the face of death. Definitely not the traditional romance stories of the past. In 2024, the very popular novel It Ends With Us has been adapted into a movie. But is it any good? And does it propel the romance genre forward? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. Before we get into this, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out with continuing to grow and it's totally free. This actually isn't the first time I talked about the romance genre on my channel. Earlier this year, I ranted and raved about the superbly successful rom-com Anyone But You, starring Glenn Powell and Sidney Sweeney, as well as doing a deep dive into the most romantic scenes in cinema history that you may have not heard of. You can check those out by clicking the link above. Needless to say, I'm a sucker for a good rom-com, and after finishing my first novel, which was a criminal thriller, I decided to undertake writing other genres, if even to simply prove that I can write anything well. One of the many sequels to my first book just so happens to be in the romance genre, which has its own story structuring dynamics that usually don't take place in other types of stories. However different romance may be, it still does contain the basic elements such as plot, character development, and world building, but with their own unique twists. Now, I've also got to confess that I have not read the novel before going to see this movie. And funny enough, I hadn't even intended on seeing this movie. But after seeing Alien Romulus, I decided to sneak into another movie that may have been a little bit more lighthearted than Alien. Little did I know, but I did not step into a random run-of-the-mill romance movie. Over the course of the first hour, I was actually lulled into thinking this was a simple romance of a woman choosing between her past and her future among two eligible bachelors. But oh no, this was anything but. The movie begins as a romance that then takes a hard right turn off a cliff into Dramaville with a whole domestic violence angle I wasn't expecting. If you're like me and you haven't read the novel, then what do you say we go over the plot a little bit, shall we? It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover is a contemporary romance novel adapted into a movie that follows the life of Lily Bloom, played by Blake Lively, a young woman who moves to Boston to start her own business. She meets and falls in love with Ryle Kincaid, played by Justin Baldoni, who also happens to be the director of the film. He's a charming neurosurgeon, but as their relationship deepens, secrets start to come out that rattle the relationship in unexpected ways. Ryle's darker, abusive tendencies begin to emerge. Lily is forced to confront her painful past, particularly memories of her first love, Atlas Corrigan, who reappears in her life at the moment. The novel and the movie both explore the cycle of abuse, difficult choices, and the strength it takes to break free and choose a better future for oneself. Both the novel and movie delve deeply into the complexities of abusive relationships, illustrating how love and violence can be intertwined in a painful and confusing way. Lily's journey is marked by her internal struggle as she tries to reconcile her love for Ryle with the reality of his abusive behavior. Despite her feelings for him, she begins to recognize the signs of a toxic relationship, which mirror the experiences she witnessed in her parents' marriage in the past. As Atlas, her first love, re-enters her life, Lily is reminded of the contrast between a healthy, supportive relationship and the one she currently endures. This forces her to confront the difficult decision of whether to stay with Ryle or leave, knowing the potential consequences for both herself and her loved ones. Both the novel and the movie emphasize the courage it takes to break the cycle of abuse, especially when deep emotions and past traumas are involved. Lily's ultimate decision to prioritize her own well-being and that of her future child serves as a powerful message about self-worth and the importance of making choices 
that lead to a healthier, safer life. In choosing to end the relationship, Lily not only frees herself, but also resolves to prevent the cycle of abuse from affecting the next generation. Strangely enough, this movie did remind me a lot of another very unrelated movie, which I also reviewed on my channel. Hell or High Water is a 2016 neo-western crime drama which follows two brothers, Toby and Tanner Howard, who embark on a series of bank robberies in rural Texas to save their family's ranch from foreclosure. The story is set against the backdrop of a desolate, economically depressed West Texas, where the struggles of ordinary people to survive in a system that seems rigged against them are palpably felt. Oftentimes, when someone is in an abusive relationship, it's not only tough to get out, but it's very difficult to recognize the signs. Both films actually deal with breaking this cycle of violence, whether physical or financial. The deeper meaning of Hell or High Water centers on the theme of breaking the cycle of poverty and the lengths people will go to in order to protect their family and secure a future. I've been poor my whole life. Told my parents, their parents before them. It's like a disease. Pass it from generation to generation. Comes a sickness, that's what it is. Infects every person you know. But not my boys, not anymore. Toby, the more level-headed and morally conflicted brother, sees the bank robberies as a desperate means to an end, paying off a reverse mortgage on their late mother's ranch to ensure a better life for his sons so they don't inherit the same burdens of poverty and debt that have plagued the Howard family for generations. He was only trying to break the cycle just like Lily Bloom. And breaking such vicious cycles is very difficult to do and it often doesn't turn out the way you'd like it to. For example, in the film, when the character of Lily Bloom finally recognizes that she really needs to leave Ryle, she's hit with the news that she's pregnant. I'm not sure whether the book dives a little deeper into this, but the movie needed to be more tasteful and this is where it falters a bit. There's no implication that Lily was violated, which led to her pregnancy. She was assaulted, yes, but it does beg the question, should she keep the baby of the man who abused her? Logically, I'd say no, but it's more difficult than that. It's a deeply personal question that only the individual can answer for herself. In this story, Lily decides to keep her daughter and raise her on her own, which is her choice, so she takes back control. As an audience member who hadn't read the book, I felt a bit conflicted about this plot point. I get why Lily would want to keep her baby, but on the other side of the coin, wouldn't she see that violation every day in the eyes of her daughter? Maybe the book does a better job of explaining this choice, but the movie's exposition certainly didn't in my opinion. The film does end on a positive note when Lily and her daughter see Atlas, and it's heavily implied that they may try to work things out and be together. From reading up about the book and movie translation, I did see the first novel has a sequel already out called It Starts With Us, so maybe we'll see Blake Lively reprise her role as Lily Bloom. Now, as far as everything else in the film is concerned, I don't really have any complaints. Blake Lively turns in a solid performance as Lily Bloom, and I certainly get that the character is confused about what to do and doesn't immediately realize what she's getting herself into. So good job by Blake Lively. Justin Baldoni equally plays the conflicted abuser quite well, but some of the uncomfortable domestic abuse scenes were admittedly a little awkward. I'm guessing the awkwardness arose from the fact that Baldoni did his level best to be as careful as possible around these specific scenes to do them as tastefully as he could. Although he may have not fully captured the experience as well as perhaps a female director may have. But I'm just speculating here. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention Brandon Sklenar. As many of you dear viewers already know, I am a massive fan of Yellowstone as well as its spin-off shows 1883 and 1923. Namely, I absolutely love the storyline of 1923 following Spencer Dutton who is played by Brandon Sklenar. And he definitely doesn't disappoint in It Ends With Us. I definitely want to keep my eye on this guy because he did a fantastic job here, just like in 1923. Overall, It Ends With Us wasn't the movie I was expecting going into it. It was a modestly budgeted movie at 25 million, and within a week of its release, quadrupled its budget with a box office haul 
of over $100 million, which is a testament to what I have been saying all along on this channel. We need more middle of the road budget movies because all we've seen over the past 15 years is super indie films or major $300 million comic book movies. The film also did bring up some very sensitive topics and it did so tastefully. The only problem I have is about some of the characters decision making. Like why didn't Jenny Slate's character of Alyssa not tell her seemingly best friend Lily that her brother killed their sibling and he's messed up about it? Isn't this something a female friend would say? This is something that's a bit confusing. If modern women are all about empowerment, you would figure that they'd help each other out by warning each other of potential creeps. But anyway, what do you guys think about all this? Did you agree with all the character decisions? And for those of you who have read the book, how close of an adaptation was it? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.